Hi, I'm Tim Vandegar from Master Vintner, and today I'm taking part in an ongoing experiment. There is a concept in grape wine making called post-fermentation maceration. Now, normally when you're making wine from grapes, you crush them and allow the red wines to soak on the skins during the fermentation period. After that's finished, you press them off and the alcohol has extracted the flavor, color, and aroma, and especially the tannin from those skins. And you wind up with a wine that has a good structure, power, color, flavor, aroma, all the really good things you want out of a red wine. Now, if you take that same wine, and rather than pressing it off when or just before fermentation is finished, you leave it in contact with the skins for a very long time, some interesting biochemical changes happen. The tannins, which you would expect to become over-extracted, and the color over-dark, and the flavors over the top, I guess, they actually mellow and become softer. Post-fermentation extraction causes some of the tannins, polyphenols, uh, bioflavonoids, all those chemically things that comprise flavor and aroma, to knit up and some will fall out of suspension. So you effectively get a wine that has all the good things and none of the bad. So in order to figure out if that works for wine kits, I've got two kits here. These are both RJ Spagnol's uh, kits. They are the Amarone with grape skins. So they've been fermenting now for a couple of weeks. Fermentation is completely finished. I'm gonna rack one of them into this carboy and the other I'm gonna leave for not one, not two, not three, but six weeks further on the skin material. Sounds wacky? Well, I'm kinda hoping it is. That's what we're up to today. So on with the racking. I'm using these big mouth bubbler uh, carboys in PTFE plastic. I love them. One of the great advantages they have over any kind of glass carboy is they bounce. <laughs> Nothing else does. Uh, the other great thing is these ones are fitted with a tap at the bottom so you don't have to siphon out of them. Now, Normally when you siphon, instructions say to siphon carefully and don't cause any splashing or bubbles. With these uh, in particular, uh, I want to introduce a little bit of oxygen into this. I want to chase some of the carbon dioxide gas off and get just a little bit of micro-oxygenation in this wine. That will help the fermentation to finish out and the small amount of oxygen will bind to some phenols in there and alter the characteristics. It's subtle stuff, but in this case a little bit of splashing by going direct from the tap into the carboy is going to be okay. So here we are. The grape skins are still on, stop, on top, floating on carbon dioxide. The yeast sediment is on the bottom, nice and compact and dense, and the wine is all in the middle, and that's what we're going to get. After I took the opportunity to remove the airlock in the top to allow air to come in as the wine comes out, racking proceeded much more smoothly. All right, that's that. We've got all the wine racked over. Now the next step is just to wait. So you can see we've left behind a considerable mass of grape skin material and yeast sediment here. And that is remaining in this one. So that's gonna form the basis of uh, the long chain polyphenols, all that chemistry that's gonna go on. And in about six weeks, we're going to rack both of them again. Uh, I'll probably find and stabilize them at exactly the same time because they will be sort of at the same stage. And then we'll see how the wine turns out another month after that and then six months and a year to see what kind of development we've gotten. That's it for today. Stay tuned for more. Thanks for watching today. I'm Tim from Master Vintner. Remember, uncork something special.